Hello, I'm here to talk about a comfortable and safe way to stretch out your hamstring, which is a very good thing to do because it's important because the hamstring attached to your lower back will move down to your knee, and if it's not if it's not flexed out, it can really hurt mess up your lower back, which none of us want. If you do a lot of sitting down, or if you just don't stretch it out, it's going to especially especially if you spend most of the time sitting if you're at your computer. It's going to shrink up a lot, and you're going to mess up your back. And so what I'm going to do is going to show you the wrong way, how to do it, what, how to use it, right? And then I'm going to show you a better way. So normally when somebody thinks, stretch your hamstring, this is what they're going to actually do. They'll put your feet down, and they'll talk about locking your knees, and they'll bend over, and they'll try to touch the ground. Or if they're really flexible, they'll try and flat hand it. But, um... The problem with this is that it can mess up your back. It doesn't protect it and strain it, throw it out. It just hurts. It's not comfortable it's not, and it's not really safe or anything like that. What I do use it for is as a test to kind of see where I am in my flexibility. So if, if you're, if when you do it, you bend over, you can only get it up to right here. You really need to work on stretching out your hamstring. If you can go further, touch the ground, you're doing good. If you can go down, put your knuckles on the ground, or flat-hand it, you're doing a lot better, which is really good, which is what we're aiming for. So, the way I do a hamstring stretch, and what I found out works really good, to protect your posture and stuff like that when you're doing it, help your lower back, and stretch it out really well, you do it on the ground. So, basically all from this basic position. You have your other arm laid out here, so you have it resting. It doesn't really matter a whole lot where this leg is, but it's just kind of rest up in here. And one of the key things about all stretches is you pay attention to posture. You, you listen to your muscles, to your tendons, to your joints, and you can listen to where okay, this is damage versus this is stretching, which is, there are actually is a difference. And if you stretch too much, too fast, too hard, you're going to tear something, mess yourself up, you're not going to be able to do um, what you're going to do, and it's not going to get stretched out. So the goal in any kind of stretching is you go to your comfortable range of motion, hold it for a bit to let it loosen up so you're familiar, co comfortable with it out on the limit, and you, go, you push just gently a little bit. So for example, when you first start out, maybe you're right here, you're going to lean forward a little bit. okay? And that's going to, you can feel the tension, you can know, throw it back down through underneath your knee. And the goal is to go for any hold for like five, ten seconds, up right where it feels mm, comfortable, but you can feel the tension. And you move forward a little bit more, not much, to where it feels, you're not actually feeling pain, but you can feel it stretching and working and loosening it up. And if you do that in the morning, evening, before exercise, after exercise, whenever you want, once a day, it'll actually speed up your stretching process a lot um, faster than if you try to muscle it all out and push it. Generally, yeah, it gives you injuries. Now, one of the things to keep in mind is that when you're leaning forward, you're not just bending forward. It doesn't stretch anything. It's not even you can hurt your back. So what you do is you can, you can imagine your leg kind of like a, like a train uh, track or something like that, and your torso is kind of like the train and you're sliding it forward. So like, like there's a line from your middle back, your lower, your lower mid back, and it's moving forward. You're using your core muscles to pull yourself on. Okay. That's what's going to create the right kind of posture and the right kind of stretching. So as you're going forward, you're leaning forward, and you can kind of use your hands to help guide you. Okay, forward. So once, after a while, for me right now, this isn't stretching anything. So once you get up here, so okay, that's not really doing much for me anymore, I've gotten that plugged out. You can go further. Obviously, you go on to the next progression. So, what I do for the next progression is I put my elbow on the ground. I'm bending over a bit more. And so, when I'm, I can bring this on this fight. If I want to, I can have my knee out here, up here, press down here, or I can catch on my opposite arm. And I can use these as kind of like anchors and guides to help pull myself forward. I remember, you keep your sliding, you're not bending, which is not exactly what you want to do. So, you're sliding forward. And build it up so that you can get a little more forward. So, once you've done that for a while, you're more familiar with it, more comfortable with it, remember, you're doing it on both legs. 
stretching it out. Moving forward. Now, one thing to help keep in mind is that when you're down here and you're using your arms for the rest of these progressions, if you imagine like you're turning yourself inside out like this, your your shoulders are going like this, your chest is going forward, okay? When you do that, like that, and you, and you can't really see it, but it's a very different kind of body mechanic that will stretch you out a lot better. Help you keep your posture. Alright, so then you can go on to the next progression. Once we got once you got stretched out here, you'll be able to reach your toes. Okay. Might, you, know, you might be stretching to reach it here, or you might be able to go all the way over. Depends on how flexible you are from doing this. Once you should be able to catch the top of your foot. And then you'll be able to actually um, pull your foot back. Because normally when you're doing all of this, you want to keep your foot in a neutral position. You don't want it down like this, you don't want it out like this, you don't want it out there. You don't want to be pulling it back. This tightens up the muscles in here and messes up the stretch. You want to relax and neutral. So when you can do this, you'll be able to catch it and do a little bit of drive with your head, so that your heels, you push your heel out. And you can pull back on your toe, right? And that will, while relaxing this, be able to stretch out your hamstring, give it more range of motion. And you pull up with your core forward so you can pulling a string here, and you draw back to your shoulder, you're driving forwards, and this will, right there, will bring a whole new dimension into your stretch. Okay, so once you've done that, you can go on to the advanced stretch. Now, this still isn't stretching me, because I've done this a lot. Um, you can go on, this will probably, probably take you months to get here, but you can catch your heel, bring it forward, so your elbows on the heel again, and then you come combine it with stretching across here, and you can bring your head down, Rest it on your knee, right? and, the, and then you draw your head forward along this path right here. You're using some arm strength, but you're also mainly you're focusing on pushing with your back and your son and your core muscles pushing forwards. That's where you can actually get the further along stretches. And then after you've done that, you'll be able to flat hand the ground and be able to make sure that your hamstring is to its optimum max limit, which is what you want if you're watching this video. So leave a comment below, let me know what you think of it if you have any problems, and let me know how it goes. Yeah.